I'd like to talk about computerbasedmath.org, something I started uh, a year or so ago. And um, what I'm going to do is dot through my argument for why we should fundamentally change math education. And uh, some of which you may have heard. I've, there was a TED talk on the, on the web and so forth that you may have seen. So I'm going to dot through that fairly quickly to try and explain my argument for why if we base computers on ma uh, math education on computers, we can do much better than we're doing right now. And then I want to talk a little bit about what we're trying to do with computerbasedmath.org itself and some of the ways I think we can help to make this, uh, make this change. So look, to dot through my concept of this, I, I entitled the talk, Stop Teaching Calculating, Start Teaching Math. And the key thing I'd like to start by asking is, why do we teach people math? What's the point? And in particular, why are we teaching it to everyone? You know, why is it a mainstream subject in almost every country in the world? My answer would be basically three reasons. Technical jobs that are increasingly important in the world. What I call everyday living. It's hard to be in a modern society and not have any mathematical skills and do well, even if you're not doing a technical job. And thirdly, what I would call logical thinking, mind training, whatever you want to count that as being. So those are the three things, I think, for why math should be a mainstream subject. Let's then ask, what is math? What do we mean by math? And you know, I would say math is probably a four-stage process. You, know, you have to pose a bunch of questions. What is it that we're trying to work out? Then you've got to take that formulation of the real world, or, or if you like, take that question and turn it into a math formulation. That's a pretty hard step for many people, and one that is, in my view, very under, underdone. I didn't learn much of that. Then you've got to take that math formulation and compute a result. Now, what do we mean by computing? What, what I mean is you take the initial formulation, you want some end thing in a mathematical form, and you want to figure out how you get to that answer. So that's the computation step three. And then four is sort of the reverse. You know, take the math formulation and turn it back into the real world. Does it answer the question? Did it verify the result? Does it make any sense? Here's the crazy thing, OK, in my view, the fundamental problem. The thing that computers are really good at doing right now is step three. Right? That's what computers do. They're really good at it. And you know, at this point, better than any humans in, in almost every respect. So guess what we're spending most of the time teaching people to do by hand? It's step three. Probably 80% of all curricula around the world in schools is hand calculating. What I think we should be doing is using students to do step one, two, and four far more than they are at the moment. Getting them to really learn about posing questions, getting them to get the formulation right, being able to take the results of doing a computation and turning it back to the real world. Step three, we should get the computer to do. And we should assume the computer can do that, unless there are really good reasons for it not doing it. So that is a fundamental thing that I think is a problem in our, in our math system right now. Now, I may, maybe I should have prefaced this, which I often do in giving a, a talk like this, with what I think is obvious, which is there is a fundamental problem in math education around the world. It is hard to find a single country which believes that their math education system is working right. So it's not like there isn't a problem here. And the problem is that the more, so a lot of people try to fix this problem in terms of improving the deployment of the traditional math where the 80% is the hand calculating. Now there are improvements you can make there for sure, no problem. You know, there are lots of things you can do which would make that better. But in the end, the question is which subject are we teaching and are we, have we got that fundamentally right? So let, let me go on. The thing I've been trying to emphasize to everyone is Math is not equal to calculating. It's a much bigger subject. And I'm not in any way denigrating math as a subject. I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying that if you think of math just as calculating, in fact, it gets even worse, because many governments talk about math as numeracy, which is sort of even some, some subset of calculating. So I'm claiming it's a much bigger subject. And in fact, that computers have liberated math from calculating. In the past, the kind of critical, the critical thing of working anything out in the world, the critical step was pretty much calculating. That was kind of where, where you got stuck. Now it often isn't. It's formulating the problem. It's knowing whether you've got the right result. So 
you know, computers have liberated the world outside. And I think of calculating as the machinery of math, not the end goal. Now, some mathematicians might disagree with that. But I would focus on the following. What's the mainstream subject here? You know, the question is, people may be excited by doing calculating by hand and may find that interesting. And that's great. If an individual enjoys doing that, that's fantastic. You know, and, and a comparison I often give is ancient Greek. I quite like doing ancient Greek, but I wouldn't force the entire population of the world to learn ancient Greek because I don't think that's particularly merited. I don't think I can give a reason why that should be a good thing to do instead of spending that time doing something else. I mean, it's all a time question in the end. Right? I mean, if everyone could learn everything, that would be fantastic, but that isn't the way the world is. Now, on the other hand, if I happen to get excited about doing ancient Greek and you know, writing Greek letters and breathings and all sorts of things, that's great. I'm not for one minute suggesting people shouldn't follow their own interests. I'm talking about what the mainstream sort of curriculum should be. Should be. And just to come back to this issue, you know, one of the calculations I did was I reckon that around the world, if you use Wolfram Alpha to get an average world lifetime, and you then work out how many lifetimes are spent per day learning hand calculating in schools around the world. And I reckon it's 106. So this is a major problem. I mean, the world is making a fantastic investment in teaching something that seems to me to be a rather narrow historical subject, not the mainstream subject that I think maths should be. So what are the objections to what I'm saying? I mean, I'm going to go through these really fast because I'm, I'm just trying to give a quick summary here. So the main one people say is you need to get the basics first before you can do stuff sort of with a machine. I think this is misunderstood. The question you've got to ask is basics of what exactly? And I often give this analogy about cars. Are the basics of driving learning how a fuel injection system works? I don't think so. I think they're separate. 100 years ago, I guess before fuel injection systems, 100 years ago, you did have to know quite a lot about the mechanics of the car because the, there was no layer of automation between the car and driving, or there was a very limited automation. And so if you didn't understand the mechanics of everything there, you know, there was a problem because the thing would go wrong and you needed to really tweak it. The, the thing was very set up with how the machine worked. And in a sense, that's what calculating has been like. But now there's this huge layer of automation. And if we ignore that and assume that you need to know every detail, you know, if I use a computer, that I need to know every detail of how the gates work in the chips in the computer, you, you need to build, you, that, that's a crazy b belief in, in how one should learn things in the world. When we have automation and machines, we should build on top of them. We should stand on the, on the height of the, that automation, not kind of ignore it and want to learn everything at the, at the lowest possible level. So I don't think that getting the basics, in my view, is getting steps one, two, and four right and understanding how to do those, not getting step three hand calculating in my, in my set of steps. Um, going down to every level of that. Okay, this one really pisses me off, okay? Computers dumb math down. The thing I always point out to people is, look in the outside world. Do we honestly believe computers have dumbed down science, engineering, uh, you could argue about finance? <laughs> But seriously, do you really believe that in the world outside in the last decades, since computers have really been prevalent, that the use of mathematics in all those subjects has diminished or got less conceptual? Nobody could possibly claim that. It's quite the opposite. We're using math far more than we ever used it because there are computers there to do it, to take out a lot of the hand calculating to make sure you can do harder and harder and harder problems. So the idea that computers dumb math down is obviously not borne out in the real world, and there's absolutely no reason it ought to be borne out in the educational world either. Now, of course, if you misapply computers, you know, and one way you can do this is to turn everything into a kind of, you know, sort of, you know, let's make everything very easy, and so somehow we can cut the teacher out of everything and get the student just to follow a simple procedure, because it's good to make computers teach procedures, because it's easy to do. If you do that kind of thing and make everything very closed-ended, Yes, you can end up with computers dumbing everything down. But like any good tool, you can use it badly. 
So used correctly, I think computers can have quite the opposite effect. I think they can make the subject of math far more conceptual. You can try many more problems. You can do much harder problems. The problems can be much more realistic. The problems can have hair all over them, not be the simplified things. What's really dumbed down in our current educational system is the kind of questions we're setting people in math. That's what's really dumbed down. And let me add one more thing to this argument, which really, you know, it's not like we're starting from a great base right now. It's not like existing math in most schools isn't pretty dumbed down. So this argument, I am very anti. Now this one, I think I have a little bit more, I suppose, sympathy with, though not, not agreement with, which is that somehow if you learn hand calculating procedures, that teaches you something. That gets you used to applying procedures and knowing how procedures work and so forth. Now, I agree that procedures and procedurizing things in the world is very important. It's very important at all levels of things, whether you're doing running a company or whether you're doing math. I just don't think that hand calculating procedures are pretty good ones to learn. I think by far the best thing to learn for that right now is programming. Programming is the way that the world procedurizes things today. It's also extremely useful in practical terms. It's also, in my view, in most respects, if, you know, far more conceptual than learning by hand a bunch of procedures that nobody really needs anymore. So, you know, we should teach programming. I think that's an important thing for teaching procedures. So what I'm really suggesting, and again, this is important to understand because it's not what's happened in most countries. I'm suggesting that computers can make math more practical and more conceptual simultaneously. It's pretty rare in most subjects to be able to do both, to be able to have both. You know, normally it's some sort of question, rightly or wrongly, between the vocational and the conceptual, between the intellectual and the vocational, perhaps I should say. I don't think that's the necessary choice here. I think it can be both. Now, traditionally what's happened with computers is what I call computer-assisted math, where the computer is applied to the existing content, the existing curriculum, in the hope to improve it. And as I say, it can, if done correctly. What I'm arguing is that we can do much better than that, and we can apply the computer to you know, a new formulation of the curriculum that assumes you've always got a computer there basically, which is pretty much like real life. So one of the things I always bring up as a simple example is calculus. Why do we teach calculus so late? I mean, why is it that, you know, I don't know what the age is, but maybe 15 or 16 people start to really learn calculus, if, if at all? Well, I think because computationally, calculus is quite hard often. But conceptually, I don't think all, much of it is all that hard at all, at least not at its most simple level. I mean, you know, it's easy for me to ask any five-year-old, you know, how much material do I need to make this shape? Or what happens when I go absolutely, you know, when I make something smaller, 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 right? That's a very, you know, primary school question, much, much larger. You know, children understand that fairly, fairly easily, that concept of extremes. I mean, this is an example I've shown many times, but you know, I made a little polygon maker for my daughter, and I was asking her, you know, as you increase the number of sides on the polygon, what happens? Right? And, you know, oh, that's interesting. We get something that looks a bit like a circle. I wonder what that means, you know. The, you know has a, how many sides does a circle have? You can get a discussion of infinity and what does that mean and all of these things, all of which are quite interesting. I mean, there are various details you need to get right, like it's very important to have color change applicable on, to such age groups, I've discovered. It's very important. And also the fact that the polygon can sit on its bottom was an important feature. But. Uh, <laughs> But the basic idea, I mean, okay, this is very simple, but the idea that you can talk to a five-year-old about calculus or some aspects of that, and that, you know, things get small, sides get smaller, 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 you know, that's a basic concept that's very powerful. It's got nothing to do with, you know, finding a derivative by hand, basically. So I think computer-based math is a critical reform, and one of the things I've been arguing around the world to various different governments and so forth, and other people involved, is that it will happen one day. Indeed, as calculators finally did somehow get into doing some things in most countries, we will get computer-based. I don't know when it will happen, but in 50 years' time, we will have a mainstream subject that is computer-based. I'm sure about that. Now, what I'm not sure about is when, who, how, you know, how quickly, all of those things. So what I've been saying is, you know, if you're a country or, or a, a state or whatever, where do you want to be? You're on the starting grid right now. 
and you may have good or bad computer equipment which helps you be slightly further forward on the grid or slightly further back. But do you want to be in the starting lot to win the race or do you want to sit there and wait for everyone else to do stuff first and then hope to catch up? Because that's what it'll be. And in the end, if you can really make this reform, I think you can turn out people who are you know, both better thinkers, which is the critical thing, but also practically better at applying maths to all the places they need to apply it to. So what have we been doing at computerbasedmath.org? Well, I mean, the idea is to start to seed a new curriculum by trying to think through, you know, if you start with a blank screen, I was going to say blank piece of paper, but I, I guess we should start with the screen. Um, what do you do? What is it that you actually want to teach in math? Assume the computer is always there. You know, what, what are the topics? What do things look like? We sort of divided what we we're thinking about into three sets. Topics, modules, and modalities, as we call them. So we've been trying to make a list of topics. Right? What does the list of topics look like? Now, I think I'm a strong believer in the fact that the topic list should, you know, it, it should be a, uh, it, it should be based on stuff that you, you're kind of interested in solving, not the inner workings of stuff. So this is a very early list of some topics. And uh, you know, contributions will be very welcome to ideas. But at the moment, what we're doing is to try and come up with actual practical questions or, or things to know about. How long do numbers need to be? You know, what determines the length of phone numbers, passwords, and credit card numbers? Right? Actual real questions. Why are phone numbers in the US you know, seven digits with three digits in front? You know, if you need to give everyone in the world an ID, how long would the number need to be? So just some basic questions about numbers. I'm just going to pick a bunch of random examples out here. OK, so is it time to panic, making predictions from unreliable data? You know, is this the next pandemic? Will we run out of food? Is the housing, is my house going to flood? So as in, here's a bit of data that's been put out there. You know, Oh, there's the next swine flu epidemic coming, right? Do you believe it? No? Does it make any sense? How can one analyze such things? Because you know, if you watch people in the real world, this is a typical real world thing. You watch people in the real world, you know, the majority of the population has absolutely no idea how to judge such things. None. They don't know when to be skeptical, they don't know even how to ask the right questions. This seems like a critical kind of thing that people should know how to do as part of their general education. You know. Attacking algorithms, is it a bug or a feature? How do you, you, here's a thing you've been given, right? It's a black box to do something, right? A program you've been given. Let's try it out, let's figure it out. Let's you know, reverse engineer it, see that it works. See what, whether it was supposed to work that way or whether it just didn't work. You know, so these are all things that, and you know, we have things like design a currency, what coins and notes do you need? So in these, so I mean, you know, there are some, uh, you know, there are various things we've been thinking out. Uh, uh, you know, can I survive a roller coaster ride? <laughs> um, you know, G-forces and working out, you know, how, the, how tight the curves are and so forth. So a lot of these things we've picked, there are things here that you really can't do without a computer. I mean, I, I don't know if I have a good, so we've got some stuff on codes, for example. You can do fantastic stuff with a computer where you, you know, trying big long things, which you couldn't possibly do in any useful way by hand. You know, compression of video photos, when do you start to notice when stuff gets compressed? So I'm just picking out a few of the, the things we've, we've sort of come up with in thinking about this. Now, in terms of modules, we're very early stage here. Let me try and show you, um, uh, let's see if I can pull up what I wanted here. So we've been trying to you know, experiment with different ways to think about, can I trust random number generators to be random? That was one of our, our topics. And um, We've been trying to make a sort of teacher and a student version of the module. And I'm not sure we got this quite right yet. But you know, we're making a module with what does randomness look like? You know, as I change things, you know, how can I? You know, let's look at stuff and see whether we just empirically think it's random and so forth. And you know, play with some things and see whether we think uh, you know, they're, they're, they're random. Um, you know, which of these looks random, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been doing you know, some of these things and trying to build some example modules with different activities. And um, you know, I'll, I'll, these are very early stages, I say. Um, and then you know, we go into more of the traditional maths, but done in a computer way. Can we mathematically quantify random and non-random? Now we've actually looked at the pictures. Do we kind of get, is there a math formulation that agrees with the way we look at these things or not? You know? 
Can we match those two? Does it make any sense? When somebody says something's random, can you go and apply a formula and see whether you agree? Right? I mean, these are, seem like interesting questions to me anyway. Um, so, and then, of course, you can do lots with computer stuff. So that, that's the sort of modules we're starting to see. And the idea is to pick some modules that we think are, are way out there, things you couldn't possibly do without computers. There are many things to fill in, which are perfectly good computer-based maths type things that are nearer the traditional. But, but we want to make out you know, the, those things. And the other thing we've been thinking about is what we call modalities. So you know, given that you have modern technology, you don't need a teacher standing in front of a class to teach stuff. There are many different new ways to do things. And so what are the ways, what are some of the things we should introduce? Now some of them aren't particularly new at all, they're just things that have never happened in math. So for example, critiquing. You know, being a Brit, I think of governments talking nonsense. So, uh, you know, one good, thing, uh, one good thing to look at is, you know, here's a video of some government person telling you, this won't work in all countries, I appreciate, but here's a government person telling you, you know, it's safe to eat these uh, beef with whatever it was, mad cow disease, okay? It's safe, you know, we've done the statistics and the following is true, okay? Well, we need to critique that. <laughs> so, you know, let's actually have live critiquing of things. You know, it, the critique, just like in philosophy classes, you get, you know, you have to do, do all sorts of things, you know, critique arguments. Why don't we do that in math very much? Verifying. Verifying is not taught very. People ask me, one of the things people ask me is, you know, don't you need hand calculating to verify stuff? And I say, no, you need verification techniques, which might be estimating by hand, but it might be five other things. If you build a new bridge today, do you honestly go and calculate the whole thing by hand to check it? No. You have various techniques that you go around to check that. So what you need to learn is verifying and hand calculating, estimating might be one of those. Um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, presenting, applying. So, so there are lots of things to do and, and use that I think are in this sort of modalities list. Um, and of course, one thing we've got a, a home here, computerbasedmath.org. And um, that's sort of the, the, the home of things where we've actually got a very good range of people who've, who've signed up to this as well. So the real idea here is to sort of get uh, a worldwide community to, to kind of drive change and to seed that community with these sorts of modules and so forth so other people can figure out what, what to do. We're, I'm not, we're not trying to make everything here. I just wanted to spend a minute on why us. And us, I mean both Wolfram Research and also the community here at this conference. I think we are in an absolutely unique position to help to make a change here. I cannot think of any other people so well positioned. Here's why. Because all the things that really matter here, knowing the whole gamut of people who use math around the world, well, we kind of know that, right? We're represented here. We, as a setup, you know, communicate with everybody who uses math in any kind of way. We hire mathematicians. You know, we sell technology to math people of different sorts. We, you know, we make math in our technology, right? So in virtually every way you can imagine, we are connected in with math in all its levels. Now, of course, in addition, we have technology that can actually help to drive this, which again, many of the people trying to make things like this in the past haven't actually had it you know, to hand. Um, and I think you know, we can call on many of you and great numbers of others who actually can help us in different areas, different disciplines to really drive this forward. So I, I, it's hard for me to think of any other group that is so well set up to be able to really drive this thing forward, which is what, one reason I think it's really exciting for us to make a really good push to try and do that. So please get involved as, as, uh, as you wish. And um, uh, I, I really look forward to talking more about this. We have a, this is the first showing. We were, we were trying to make a little badge. And uh, we, uh, so it's what I call them, I don't know what it's, uh, I call this the, our Mobius infinity. But anyway, um, our design team came up with this in the last few days, which I think is kind of nice. So uh, we will hopefully see that around more. Thanks.